Hi guys. Hi guys. Guess what? I have debt with me. Yeah. Wasn't even hiding yeah, in the cupboard this time. Nope. Nope. No. I was. Uh, <laughs> so you know what this is, guys. This is PCBWay.com time. So. First of all, I'd like to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video and for providing the PCBs that we have here today. And this project, which you're hoping to complete today, is Uncle Sweepy. So this was the audio sweep generator we designed basically around an MP3 module. The MP3 module can also play WAV files, so effectively you can load whatever you want onto here. And I will link you to some samples I have on my Google Drive, so you don't even have to make your own. And we have a very nice audio sweep generator with bells and whistles. And a sync pulse. And yeah. bass drums. And bass drums. And so that's yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oh, yes, and a bit of toilet humor. <laughs> 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 OK, yeah, so let's just briefly see what we're going to do with this. So here is the breadboard version that we built and we demonstrated on the channel and also on live stream. So we know this actually works. So all we really need to do is to take the modules and components off here, fit them onto one of these PCBs, and we should be good to go. So isn't this easy? Yeah, that is so easy. Yeah. So I'll get that done and we'll be back shortly. OK, guys, so I've put this together magic of video editing and this looks beautiful yeah the magic you did a good job man the magic of tv eh? yeah <laughs> <laughs> there we go so you can see really the board is just a carrier for the modules yeah we have just the four resistors the three leds we have the various modules now you'll see on display we have these funny little stripes like a flag five ground ground five and that actually shows you the direction in which you fit the jumpers on here so when you buy these modules they come in various formats, if you like, so you can buy them and you may not realize what you've bought. So the five and the grounder reversed and all the SDA and SCL reversed. And this allows us to set how we want. So we can see our little display is ground and VCC. And we can see that is with the jumpers in the vertical position. Okay. And then we have on our SCL SDA, which is also vertical. Now, to be quite honest, you could just put little blobs of solder on. Yeah, yeah. we don't actually need to have jumpers because unless the thing blows up or something, we're unlikely to change it. And if we do, you can just use a bit of braid, unsolder and solder the other way. So whichever way. Yeah, normally I'd say the same, but since it's a revision, revision zero and we're building this for the first time, so um, it's fine to have jumpers on there so we can play around. When something goes horribly wrong, this is the easier way to fix this. Exactly. Now, you see that we fitted some of this pin header on here, the sockets. You could actually, or rather we could, because we want to do like a final version of this PCB, and that's where Debt's going to ask you a question. Do I? Yes, you do. Oh, okay. Um, right now, we're running into a bit of a snack here. Because I, I remember when I planned this thing, I wanted to add the rotary encode and the display 90 degrees uh, to, the, to the board itself. So not this way mounted. And I realized, well, I screwed up. I uh, put both of the connectors the wrong way around. So the uh -huh. rotary encoder should be 180 degrees swapped and the same for the display. So you could use uh, them upside down. So if you wanted to mount into some little case here, so you have some. Yeah. So really you're saying to have the mm -hmm. encoder and the display perpendicular to the Ooh, PCB. Ooh, fancy words there. That's the one. <laughs> That's a long word, yeah, as I said. Yeah. They have so, long words in Germany. Yeah, they have some too, yeah. Uh, so, but, uh, so now we're we're working with this, and you know, for a thing that's living on your on your bench, it probably doesn't matter. And um, yeah, let's hear you people, please. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, yeah. Sh how should this be? Um, it's a revision zero, so everything something is doomed to go wrong, anyways. So uh -huh. this is what went wrong here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, if you look at this now, in actual fact. The display is below the level of that, so you couldn't fit this into a case. You'd have to have this higher up. Mm. So I would think probably perpendicular is 
better. But mm, yeah, yeah, this is what I normally went for. Yeah. Yeah, but as you also mentioned, if this is just a thing living on your bench is a bare thing, it's probably better this way. Yeah. <laughs> so horses yeah. for courses, as they say. Horses for courses. I never heard this one. Oh, nice English one. English one. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, guys, you can see it's put together. These connectors actually you can connect some speakers directly. This will drive I think up to three watts per channel. I haven't fitted those, so I've just connected some. RCA sockets or Fono sockets if you prefer we can connect these to our speaker system here this is the sync pulse to the scope and obviously then you would monitor somewhere in the amplifier you're working on with the scope and you can see where the sweep starts so I guess what we need to do now is power this up and try it this is a micro or rather mini USB not micro this is a mini USB so you can buy these Arduino nanos in the various styles if you prefer USB-C. I mean, this is really put together with stuff we had lying around, yeah? Yep. So that's what we have. And we just plug this in and hopefully it powers up. Green! Green! That's really bright, that green. Oh, but I don't see anything on the display. I don't see anything on the display, no. Green uh, is power. Green is power? I see. Yep, green is power. So why there's nothing on the display? Good question. Next question. Press the button on there. No, there was some some small thing in the some jig. Yeah, well, revision zero, you know. <laughs> well, this works when it was on the breadboard. I know. So we have to uh, investigate. Investigate. Okay, let's get on with that. Okay, so we have power on the board, and this has a green light. So I'm guessing this has power. It has power bytes. So the first possibility is we have the. Power and grab the wrong way around here, maybe, or the SCL SDA. Yeah, let's figure this out. So we can go from here to here, and we have no power. No power. Oh, 4.4. 4.4. So we have Which power. Which sounds right, yeah, because there's a diode on the Arduino, Arduino itself. So we're running on something like four volts after that. So why doesn't it work? Is it this was working? My first guess would be maybe I, maybe I screwed up the SCL SDA, so I would. Okay, how do we test for that? Simply switch the the jumpers. Ah, okay. So switch the SCL and SDA jumpers and see if it then works. Yep. This would be the easiest fix ever because I only have to change the label on the board. Yeah. Okay. And if not, do we need to take the oscilloscope and have a look? Yeah. After that, uh, it gets okay. more interesting. So we're going to display. Oh, the lights up! Hey, okay, guys. So we have the SCL and SDA lines the wrong way round, and now it's working. So we'll connect some speakers to this, and let's oh, you have can, a listen. You can check, can check if the uh, rotor encoder works. The rotor Yay! encoder does work. The rotor encoder does work. Okay. If you, if you press it, it should be doing the play thing. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, the blue lights on the yeah, play. The light show goes on. Good. Back off again. Goes back on. If you hold it down, it's volume. Hold down yeah. for volume. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold down again, back into track. Yeah. Yeah. Right, let's connect some speakers. Okay, so we're ready to try this, but before we put some strange sounds on, Jet, is there any problem with this reversion of SCL and SDA? I mean, could we damage something? Oh, no, luckily no, not, not in this case. Uh, it was simply, the clock and the data was simply flipped around, so mm -hmm. nothing can go wrong there. The voltage would be bad, because that probably would have killed the uh, the display. But we pro we would have seen this because the Nano would probably draw way more current than it, it's, it, it yeah. wants to deliver. And um, mm. yeah, we would have seen this maybe in flames or something, oh. or explosions. <laughs> so getting the, yeah, getting the ground and the five volts wrong way around would be bad. Yeah, yeah. But and SCL and SDA. And in mm. hindsight, 2020, you know, uh, we should have measured this before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hear something. Let's find out. So we press the button. Oh, oh yeah, there's say 10 kilohertz. A 10 kilohertz. Like let's, let's start at the beginning. So number yeah. one, the blue light says it's playing. Let's see if the sync pulse works. So we should see the middle, middle LEDs and should flash red. Does it flash? Yes! yes. <laughs> <laughs> and not only do we have a visual indication, if I connect the scope, we can see that. Okay guys, so we've had a little play with this. We want to show you some interesting things and then we'll explain what's actually going on with this. So, 
this is the sweep sound you can hear it yeah and you can see it's on my analog scope here now if you notice you see there there's like something interesting happening here very wobbly very wobbly indeed there was a sink yeah very wobbly indeed can you see that we were on the analog scope because when we first saw this on the digital scope and we tried a couple of different ones we didn't believe what we were seeing basically <laughs> but we know what's causing that let me just show you if we go to continuous tone yeah and believe me this is loud <laughs> that is loud guys we have a, a nice clean sine wave yeah if you didn't like that you'll like us even less Fortunately, my ears are not so good. I yeah. don't hear that so well. All the dogs in, in the vicinity are yeah. currently screaming. That's a very low frequency. And you can see we have a very nice, clean sine wave. Okay, not anymore. Not anymore, so we have some effects. Yeah. And you notice I don't have to press the button to stop. It just goes in between. Yeah, sinking off we go. Oh! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They always work. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all kids at heart, yeah? yeah? I won't go right through because of some music and I'll probably get a copyright mm. complaint or something. So you can see that's working apart from the sweep. And the sweep is like... It sounds... To our ears this is fine. Well, it's loud and horrible but fine. Yeah, and I'm guessing to you guys it sounds okay, but it isn't okay. Mm -hmm. So, having messed around with scopes and things, I said, oh, let's have a look at the sample that's on the SD card that's playing that, because I downloaded this from somewhere. So we had a look at the actual sample, and we'll show you what we actually have. And there is our sample. So look, it's all over the place. Although it actually sounds like a clean sine wave it's nothing like that and that's what the scope is seeing so the scope is actually showing us correctly the amplitude is like all over the place if i can expand it out a bit you'll probably see a little bit better now yeah you downloaded this from somewhere right yeah i went to one of these sites for a free sample and i told you i wanted a audio sweep sine mm -hmm. wave and that's what it gave me so probably the way to go here for you guys if you want to play along at home is to go, go to Audacity and make your own risers or sweeps or whatever you want to do because these are MP3s or WAV files if you want. Yeah, it'll so, play both WAV yeah, or MP3. Yeah. So the thing doesn't matter what you put on there and this is, for us, this is the most gain here for the, the most feature here because you can really fit this to your use case. If you're testing speakers, you want to have some music that you know, simply put it on there. Yeah. If exactly. you want to have some test tones, you can simply select your test tones, ding, 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 put them on there. No, it won't display the name of the test tone. It can't do that because uh, I only from the MP3 player, I only get back, there are so many tracks on the MP, on the yeah. card, I don't get the name of the track. So no way there. Yeah, so the way this works, when we put, uh, put some more samples on the card, when we first insert it, or rather every time we power up, the processor counts how many tracks there are mm -hmm. from one up to I think 99 is the maximum this will yeah. actually give us. This is why, why it knows that uh, there are 12 tracks on this card. If you have 10 tracks on the card, it simply says 10 tracks. And 99 would say 99. Yeah. yeah. So we'll have a look around to make a good file for this. We need to do two things here, guys. We need to get the final version of the PCB done. So how would you prefer it? With the display and the encoder vertical or with them horizontal? That's the first one. And the second one is we need a good quality audio sweep, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Maybe a few different ones, some that sweep faster than others. Audacity is the, is the way to go here, I think. This is a free audio software. Simply use, simply Google Audacity, the first thing that comes up. I think they had a problem with some pirated links. So have a close eye on what you download there. But Audacity would be my choice here if you don't want to spend any money there. Yeah. So guys, we're kind of asking you some things here. A, on the design of this, and B, if somebody's got a good sample, save us a bit of work. Drew, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it can yeah, be before, lazy debt and lazy yeah, rich. Yeah, <laughs> and before the discussion comes up with, oh, this isn't a, uh, don't know, it, this doesn't compare to a Schwarz, Rode and Schwarz 
10,000 euro sample generator. No, it doesn't. No. But this thing costs you under $10. So uh, I think for what it does, it's fine. Absolutely good enough. Yeah. Good enough, yeah. Good, good enough. Good enough is the thing. Good yeah. enough. And if you're really bothered about the MP3 samples, use WAF. Use WAF, whatever you like. Exactly. I think it does something like 96 kilohertz on there, or 48 kilohertz sample. So yeah. you'll probably be fine with anything there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this card, this one's a 64 meg card, so we can get lots and lots of stuff on there. Indeed. Once this is completed, of course, we will put this on PCBWay.com as a shared project. So you have schematics, Gerber's layout, and I will link the samples. Hopefully the ones that you guys give to us as well. I'll put them onto my Google Drive so everything is there that you would need to build this. Yeah, and we put them on a complete Arduino environment with all the software you need to program the little CPU on this one. So uh, yeah, so you, know, you have source code, yeah, sure. everything. Yeah, we keep source code in in there. We won't do the thing where we only give you a hex file or something. No, no, no. You yeah. get you get the complete thing from us. Yeah, which means you guys can improve it. Okay, guys. So that's really uh, update on that. You can see basically the thing is working. Just a few little things to sort out. I'd just like to thank PCBWay once again for sponsoring this video, which allows us to do these interesting projects. And thank you very much to Debt, without whose input, I really couldn't do this alone, for sure. Thank you, mate. And this one was your brainchild. Yeah, things, because I was lazy. <laughs> <laughs> this is when lazy gets you somewhere. Yeah, there is that. So with that thought, guys, we'll leave you for now. And I look forward to seeing you all soon again on Learning Electronics Repair. Ciao, Ciao for now. For now.